those lobsters are scraped every day. Uh, myself and my partner, my wife, uh, spend a lot of time on the end of a scraper. Cleanliness is a large, large key to success in this game. We've all heard the saying, cleanliness is next to godliness. Now, that might have been your mama trying to get you to tidy up your room. But for Lelton and Phyllis Morse, the habitat they're most concerned about cleaning is for the birds. My job is to make sure that I have my birds healthy um, and they're conditioned and they're ready to go. And when you say ready to go, you mean what? So I race pigeons. That's right, pigeon racing. Lelton's Hilltop Home in Kingsbury serves as both the finish line and training grounds for his flock of far-flying fowl. In competitions akin to marathon runners or thoroughbred horses, these avian athletes take to the skies to see who can fly home the fastest. By the time Lelton's birds are ready to compete, they've practiced the trip countless times. Once my babies uh, can fly and play for one hour without landing, uh, that's kind of the, the green light for me to start training. And when I start training, I'm talking about road training, actually putting my birds in a training basket, uh, putting them in the back of a, a pickup or a vehicle, and driving them a short distance away from their loft and watching them come back so they learn to get up, get out, and go home. five, 10, 20 miles at a time, they build up their homing abilities until these bird brains rival the radar of a passenger jet. It's all for a contest hatched from one of nature's greatest mysteries. Uh, the homing ability of pigeons is, is really a great secret. It's not necessarily the first area they were, it's not where they were born. Um, it's the area that they're really first liberated, wherever they first take their maiden voyage, if you will, for the most part. There are many uh, documentations and there are many races across the country that are that are in the thousands of miles. Um, it's uh, it's very interesting how they do that. If there's one thing more exciting to Lelton than the mystery of how pigeons do what they do, it's the exhilarating buzz in the air on race day. But the competition is steep, especially coming from his own household. When I asked Phyllis to marry me, she embraced it with open arms. But I'll tell you, on race day, um, we've been married 31 years, on race day she's trying to beat me, and so she's awfully excited about them, so it's, it's a lot of fun. So what's the difference between your pigeons and your husband's pigeons? Well, mine are winners. And <laughs> Yours are winners? Yeah. <laughs> they are, <laughs> they are, and they're prettier. <laughs> Today's 100-mile sprint begins in New Braunfels at a pigeon racing clubhouse. Trainers meet here to register their birds, scan their tracking chips, and load them into a specialized trailer. Then the entire flock is driven hours away to the starting line. Tomorrow morning, the birds will scatter to the winds and fly back home in different directions. Bird. Number eight. But at this point, all Lelton can do is wait and worry. There's a lot of adversities that they face uh, just in the wild and the natural. So when you liberate or release a pigeon, whether that be a training toss or a race, they have uh, high line wires and poles that are out there, fences, uh, they have trees, and then they have hawks. And so when you liberate them, you certainly are probably their largest cheerleader, if you will. I mean, you're, you're wanting, um, first of all, for them to perform but maybe more so you're wanting them just to get back home and you know all in one piece and healthy and in good shape and so uh, for, you know for me that's part of the drive that's exciting and the exhilaration is every time I take one of these little guys out they're basically like little soldiers you know they uh, you, you put them through their paces you've taught them all you can you've conditioned them to the best you can you've cared for them and then when you turn them loose on a race they basically lay their life down for you I mean they're laying their life on the line saying that they can make it from point A to point B and, uh, and for me, that's just, it's a very interesting, very humbling thing. Hundreds of miles from Kingsbury, a trailer full of little soaring soldiers pulls into an empty parking lot just as the sun begins to rise. 
They've been preparing for this event since birth, and now their instincts will call them home. Where Lelton Morse will have his eyes fixed on the horizon, waiting for that triumphant moment when they cross the finish line. <laughs> When pigeons are returning from a race, there's a well up inside of me. I don't, I don't really know how the, what right word there is to use for it, but it's, it's excitement, it's exhilarating, it's fear of the unknown of who's in the group and who's not. But mostly for me, it's just great exhilaration and excitement. When I look across that green field down below my loft, um, to me, when I see them, uh, there's not a lot that excites me more than that, maybe other than my wife and my son. Um, I think if you've ever faced some adversity in your life and you've had to really come through certain challenges that, is, that may be difficult for you, it's almost like I can relate to these guys because of the effort that they have to put out and what they do, and they make it look easy. They never complain about it. But for me and, and, and Phyllis, I don't, I don't see us stopping uh, racing the pigeons um, for any reason as long as my health will allow and, uh, and the good Lord lets me be healthier than I plan on racing pigeons. I love that story. Me too, and we've got plenty more where that came from. Just click on the subscribe button and keep traveling with us.